is going on everybody it's been a long time two three four almost a month probably yeah got a little busy had some stuff going on lots of stuff going on actually uh, too much to talk about in this format but uh, let's just say uh, I was gonna do one of these around Halloween time for horror movies unfortunately I got to not feeling so great right around Halloween time so didn't get to do that didn't get to make notes and uh, I'm back and uh, if I'm being completely honest I got nothing today nothing written down free in this stuff so uh, I don't even know where to start honestly uh, Halloween happened hope everybody had a happy and safe Halloween I had a Halloween of sitting on the couch and watching TV as uh, my girlfriend was uh, coming ill and uh, you know her mother had actually come over and handed out candy for us so we were both kind of crashing out on the couch uh, but still you know I mean 15 years ago I used to love like having Halloween off to do stuff and all that I just kind of liked having a peaceful night at home honestly and uh, we had a lot of candy left over and well I'm a fan of candy so you know that, that, that made me feel good about things uh, pretty peaceful. I mean, it's one of those things where, you know, you, you know you're getting old when, you know, Halloween night after the trick-or-treating is done, you just sit down and watch TV. Yeah, that's about it. Didn't even watch horror movies, just watch TV. It was Tuesday night, so we were probably watching SmackDown, and then probably watched 205 Live, because we're the wrestling fans. I may have mentioned that before. Oh, anyway, uh couple things, you know, I, I was going to give a little quick TV recap as I uh, watch too damn many shows now, so I don't really feel like giving you a specific breakdown of each show. Highlights, on the other hand, I'm willing to do. Uh, top tier, Star Trek Discovery continues to be a very excellent show. I'm like having no complaints about that at all. And, uh, I think uh, any of you who are actually watching it, hey, look at that, we got a little more light. I think any of you that are actually watching it would probably enjoy it as well. Uh, anybody who is currently watching it, you know what I'm talking about. There's been a lot of really cool stuff. I mean, it's not the most uh, stereotypical Star Trek show, but I think that's what makes it really good. Uh, and uh, other highlights, uh, second tier, we'll go Discovery, number one. Gotham has got to be number two. Gotham has consistently delivered episode after episode after episode of just excellentness. There has not been a weak episode in most of the entire show. I mean, when it first started off, it was a little rough. It was a little on the procedural side. But once they started getting into the serializing, the, the serialization and the creation of the actual Batman villains, you know, ten years before Batman comes into play, really really got really sound took off really well and I'm uh, quite happy with it it is uh, as I said second favorite show on TV uh, <coughs> hell since we last talked uh, what the uh, CWDC shows all started up uh, quick little breakdown there you know Monday nights Supergirl I mean Supergirl's a decent show it was never a great one even to begin with I mean, it's on its third season now and they kind of know what they want to do with the show, but uh, given the end of last season, the season started off with uh, Kara, aka Supergirl, really an unhappy person, very pissy, and it kind of ruined it for the first half of like the first episode. But then they started introducing what may become the main villain, and it got a lot better. I mean, still not great TV, but it's good enough. I mean, it's not garbage. It's it's pretty good. It's worth watching, especially if you're a fan of DC Comics and all that, and Supergirl, and I mean, the chick who plays Supergirl is amazing, and the rest of the cast is also really good, so I mean, that one's not bad. And you got Tuesday nights. Tuesdays this year include The Flash and Legend of Tomorrow. Last season of The Flash, quite disappointing. Uh, had a lot of uh, what we like to call butthurt, a lot of uh, just overdramatic stuff, which was a complete tone shift from the previous seasons, I mean, the first season of The Flash, I mean, he gets the powers, and he's fun, and he's running around, and he's fighting off these metahumans, and he's having a good time, 
And then he kind of gets a pretty more ominous villain in season two, and it's pretty bad. But then, you know, he takes care of that, and then he's like, oh, well, I want to go do this thing with the timeline since I can travel time. And he makes a big mistake there and spends the entirety of season three paying for that mistake, regretting that mistake, and just being angry at himself for that mistake. And Barry Allen shouldn't be angry. He's the Flash. He was the funnest member of the Justice League. Come on now. Barry Allen needs to be fun. The Flash needs to be fun. Team Flash is great. I mean, there's lots of great characters on the show, but it needs to be fun. And Season 3 was not fun. But now, we've segued into Season 4, and I think even the creative team knows that. And even they will admit that, you know, this season's a lot more fun than the previous seasons, which is good. They finally realized what their strength was, because it really needed that element of just good time. I mean, you're watching the show because you, you like the characters, you want to follow them, but man, if you're watching a show where the characters are just angry or upset or depressed all the time, how's that any different than your real life? I mean, honestly, you watch TV to escape reality. How about we have some fun with that? And The Flash is getting a lot better at that with this current season, and, uh, Next show, Legends of Tomorrow, which is sort of a spin-off of the Flash Flash Arrow. And uh, that show's always been fun. That show knows what it is, and it's stuck with its guns. Even going into Season 3, I was a little worried because we call this the CW Season 3 curse, where the third season is where the show just tanks. But uh, so far, Legends of Tomorrow has just been more fun, more fun, more fun. It's a show that knows its identity. The writers know what they want to do with the show. And they have a lot of fun with it, and that's what makes it worth watching. So Legend is probably the number one CW DC TV show, without a doubt there. It's it's the best. Uh, and then Wednesdays they put some stupid Dynasty remake or something on the CW, and I could care less about a soap opera remake. CW's got enough overdrama as it was. I tried watching Riverdale, for Christ's sake, and uh, that just didn't work out for me halfway through the season. But, not going to talk about that. Going on to Thursday nights, which is the first CW DC show. Now it's going into its sixth season, Arrow. Um, playing it a little safe this season. I mean, first season was excellent. Second season was so daring and so great and so much better than the first season. It was the greatest season. And then season three hit that CW season three curse. Kind of went meh. And then season four, they're like, oh, well, maybe we should go in a different direction. And that didn't work out so well for it. And then there was last season, season five, which was just, all right, let's get back to what, what started Arrow and what made Arrow great. And let's stick with that. And season five, fantastic. Almost as good as season two. Like, the bad guy alone, Adrian Chase, was fantastic. And uh, sorry if you haven't watched that and you catch that name because it's a spoiler. But uh, anyway, moving on. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. This season of Arrow is kind of playing it safe. I mean, they just introduced the, uh, who might be the new one of the new big bads of this season. And it's actually the guy from Person of Interest, the uh, guy who made the uh, crime detecting computer and all that. And So that was pretty cool to see him. Uh, it just seems like they're playing the episodes a little safe. Although, the most recent episode had a really cool little twist where, like, Oliver Queen was playing the part of the person in the base telling the, the team what to do. And it was kind of nifty. So that was pretty cool. I felt that made that episode a lot more enjoyable. But uh, that's, that's what we got for the CWDC shows. Uh, other than that, I gave up on Inhumans. Marvel's Inhumans, yeah. I haven't watched an episode since episode two. I really don't know if it's any good or not. Couldn't tell ya. Um, I'm guessing it probably needs work. But anyway, moving on from that, we got uh, The Gifted. Ooh, ooh. Fox. Fox is scoring big, man. Fox is, Fox is doing good with their superhero shows because they started Gotham a few years ago. And Gotham, as I was already singing its praises, is amazing. And then, then now they have The Gifted, and it has all the potential in the world to be as good as Gotham. And it's an X-Men story, which is really cool because it's actually placed in the actual X-Men universe from the movies and all that, which I'm a huge fan of. That makes that makes it that much more enjoyable. I missed last week's episode. I'll probably catch up on it on, you know, the Hulu or whatever at some point. But, but that was good, too. That's That's been another good show. If you haven't had a chance to catch it, The Gifted, I would, I would recommend. I would recommend watching The Gifted. 
from the get-go. It's, it's been pretty non-stop, fast-paced, action-packed show ever since it started. So, uh, yeah, that one bears my recommendation as well. Uh, what else is there? I don't even know. I know I kind of you know, go on this TV conversation thing for far too long and everyone gets sick of it. But, uh, hey, it's one of the things I do a lot of. And uh, eventually I'll actually go into detail about wrestling. You know, I watch the WWE, as I said before. Uh, we got the big Survivor Series coming up. And, uh, yeah, um, I'm excited for it. But that's still a few weeks out. And it's just, I don't feel like going into the details of all of it to those of you who aren't understanding for those of you who do watch it we can have a conversation and maybe at some point in time I'll start critiquing just that maybe I'll do a separate blog for my wrestling friend fans only or something like that but for right now we're just gonna glaze over that real quick and uh, just say that I'm kind of excited for that uh, what else uh, well, Thor Ragnarok came out I haven't seen it yet but it came out so that's cool um, yeah, that's what I got there. Uh, this is another one of those really disjointed video blogs, and I apologize for that. But, meh, whatever. Uh, ah, I got it. I got some goodies. Got some goodies. You know, we kind of do these you know goodies things every now and then. I figure, show some things that I've acquired that I think are really cool. First thing I'm going to show off here. Not you. Right here. I've never watched this show. Not gonna lie, but I mean, it's Norman Bates. I mean, come on, dude. Even looks like he could qualify for a young Norman Bates. Now this, this, yep, yeah, it's pretty pricey. If you buy it from here in the United States off Amazon. In fact, I'm looking at the website right now. They want $127 for this. I, thanks to a friend of mine, K Shrek. I know you're out there. Uh, found this. Amazon.com, thirty. Not Amazon.com. Amazon.uk, thirty bucks. The entire series. The entire series. For thirty bucks. Like oh, look at all the discs. I can't figure out where the camera is. All the discs, all the seasons, everything, all of it. Thirty bucks. And you'd pay one hundred twenty-five bucks if you bought that from Amazon here. It's region free, so that that's a plus. Uh, kind of a generic case. You got Freddie Highmore as Norman on the cover, and then uh, can't remember who plays his mom, but uh, yeah, she, she looks like uh, you know very attractive. Norman Bates' mother, as we all know, she's a pretty big character in Norman Bates' life. But anybody who's watched Psycho, oh, what else? Uh, another Amazon UK purchase. No slipcover, but Daredevil season two. You know, the season that had the Punisher debut in it. 